Hey guys, just jumping into Hebrews chapter 11 today, just following on, getting into more of faith and living by faith and how the righteous will live by faith and how those who before us, the prophets, the disciples, everyone beforehand lived by faith. And uh, if you want to grab your word and read along with me, that's awesome. If not, I got the word right here. So it's just following on yesterday uh, after chapter 10. Chapter 11 is a little bit longer. Just reading along. So starting from verse 1, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it's the evidence of things not seen, but living in faith, knowing. Because obviously we know that Christ is, is in us. We can't physically see him if we were to physically lay eyes on the glory of God. We disintegrate because we remember at Mount Sinai in the Old Testament when God had the people of Israel stay down at the uh, base of the mountain. It only took Moses up because he knew that if they were to lay eyes on him that they would die because of his glory. But it's to have the things hoped for. It's the substance of th things hoped for but the things not seen. And we haven't seen his second coming yet. We haven't died and seen him yet. So when you live in Christ, you live in faith. That's This is us, is the context of, of us living in faith to Christ, knowing that our life is saved, knowing that he lives in us, but yet our physical eyes can't see him. But it's to also be looked at too as, for example, if I need something from Christ, or if I ask him for something, if I go to lay my hands on somebody to pray and I ask him to pray, you know, Lord, Father God, I pray that you would heal this person or heal this uh, through me because this is what your word says, is to already have in my mind and my heart that he's going to do it. It's having faith fully that he's going to deliver and that he's going to work in our life to do whatever we need done and whatever we ask him because he's the Holy Father. He's a heavenly father that loves us, take care of us. So is to have that conscious, that faith to know that he's going to be there, know that even if things don't go the way that you want it, to know to have faith in God and to know that he's still going to deliver you through it and all things work for his glory and for your better. So even though it might not go the way that we want it, it's just to have faith in the Lord Jesus to know that through him we're going to have salvation, that through him he's going to deliver us. Through him we're going to overcome our tribulations and our hardships and our troubles. doesn't mean that we're not going to have hardships and troubles. It actually means that we're going to have more. It just means that he's going to deliver us, give us strength to overcome it. And uh, to live in faith, you know, you're living in faith. You're righteous. You're right standing with God because you live in faith. Those who are righteous will live by faith because we're living in faith knowing that we're um, delivered by Christ. We haven't seen a second coming yet. We haven't laid eyes on him yet because the word says that no man has, has seen God. You know, there's so much that, that we look forward to, but we have faith in him and of the assurance, but the evidence of things that we haven't seen yet. But total faith, and that's why you're righteous, right standing with the Lord, because you live by faith. Verse 2 says, For by the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand. So we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not by, made by the things which are visible because it's to be looked at as human hands you know life itself wasn't created by man we know that there's an origin and everything comes from god even though men and women still invent things we still have children they all still come from god god is still the origin he's still the knowledge he's everything that we have and he's given to us i just apologize guys ahead of time too if you hear anything in the background i have my dog with me so but to know it's the thing that, that isn't seen which made everything, and that's God, and that's to have faith. To have faith in the Savior, to live knowing that God created all things, that's living in faith, and to know that what is seen didn't make any of this, but what is not seen made everything, because it's God. Verse 4 says, By faith Abel appeared to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying for his gift, and through it being dead till speak, it, he being dead uh, still speaks by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him for because he had taken him he had a testimony and he pleased God but without faith it is it impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and it's to seek and you will find but to it, it, it's impossible to please God without faith because if you truly have a relationship with God if you truly know God you're living in faith if you're truly saved truly have salvation you're living in faith so you're pleasing to God but those who 
only, you know, it's so easy. They say, oh, I can't see him, so I don't believe, but they can't see the wind. And they say, oh, yeah, well, I can see the wind moving. So you can see the Word of God, the Spirit of God moving throughout the world. So it's to have faith knowing that it's the things that aren't seen, but uh, of evidence clearly of the things that aren't seen, that it's impossible to please God without the faith because you have to have faith to be saved. You have to have faith to, to live in Christ. But he says he, he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek after him. Verse 7, it says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of the things yet not seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteous, which is according to faith, because it's all faith. So you kind of get, as we go along here too, you're going to see the pattern. Faith, 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 faith. All those who belong to God, all the prophets, those who really had a, a part with God and had a part in the in the scriptures, had faith, lived in faith. And now that's to for us to carry on because we're righteous. We're right standing with the Lord. We're not on the ways of this world who only go off, go off the things that are seen. We go off of the things that aren't seen because we have faith in the one who isn't seen. Verse 8, it says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive his inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Because it's where he couldn't see. He couldn't see where he was going because he was blinded. It's the things that aren't seen. Knowing that he is the light that's going to shine the way. He is the God that's going to take after us. He is the bulldozer that's going to clear the path for us so that we can follow him. Because we no longer go our own ways walking in the darkness, walking in blind. We now have the guide, which is Christ, who lights up the path. Because we don't go off of what is seen. We live in faith and go off of what was not seen, just like Abraham. Verse 9 says that by faith he dwelt in the land of promise and in the foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac, Jacob, and heirs with them in the same prop, uh, promise. For he waited in the city which has foundation his builder and maker as God. By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Because it's the faith she lived her entire life knowing that she couldn't conceive but when the angel the angel came to her and said that she was going to conceive she laughed at it at first when it ties into abraham and the faith that abraham has because abraham was of age as well they truly had faith and they truly believed they truly accepted it because it was the the lord speaking to them it was the will of the lord and they accepted it. they had faith even though um they laughed at it they didn't believe it at first as soon as the angel had spoken to him, as soon as they started to believe, the baby wasn't there yet. It didn't start growing, but she believed before she had seen anything. Same with Abraham. Therefore, from one man to him as good as uh, dead, were born as many as the stars in the sky and the multitude, innumerable in the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith. Verse 13 says, These all died in faith, not receiving the promise, not having received the promise, but having seen them from afar, uh, were assured from them, embraced them, confessed them that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. For those who say such things, clearly, plainly, they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called into mind that country which they had came out of, they would have had an opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. He's prepared a city for them. It's the new Jerusalem, your descendants of Abraham. Just like he says, as there's more in the stars in the sky and more of the sand by the shore as the descendants of Abraham. And he's not ashamed to be called their God because we are unashamed of him. Romans 1, 16, for it says, I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm unashamed of his name. And he says that those who are ashamed of me, I will for surely be ashamed of the father of them in front of the Father, but He's not ashamed of us. He's not ashamed to call us call us uh, our God, which is amazing because we can go to Him, we can refer to Him, we can refer and approach God boldly. Know that He loves us. Know that He loves being called our God. Loves that that we know that as well, and we have assurance. We have faith in Him. And he prepared a city for Him, and that's what we're still waiting for. So I promise the hope of the new Jerusalem to come as the holy city that God is making for uh, his people and that will come after uh, the wrath of God, after he separates in uh, his judgment day. Verse 17, it says, By faith Abraham, when he had tested, offered up Isaac, and he would receive the promise, offered up his only begotten son. So you see the pattern too, is those who live in faith from the Old Testament prophets to 
Christ himself. Abraham living in faith, offering his son Isaac up to God, God not letting him do it, just testing his faith. And it's the same with God offering his only son, only God gave his son, allowed his son. God being in the flesh came and took that for us, made a way and we live by faith knowing that. But you see the pattern, it's those who belong to God live in faith in him. Same with Christ, Christ is the only begotten of the son, but Christ lived in him, so we had faith in him. And it's to take the characteristics of the prophets, uh, Moses, Abraham, and, and to look at Christ and see the faith that they had in God. They didn't live their life without having faith in the Lord. They didn't take a step. They didn't go a day without having faith in the Lord. They couldn't. They couldn't live a righteous, holy uh, life. Christ couldn't do what he did without having faith in the Lord. But it's an example. He was there to show us as well that every step he took, everything he did, he had faith in the Lord. But to also look at it as a, um, how it symbolizes is the same characteristics of God. Those who knew God in the Old Testament to those who know God in the New Testament. It's all the same. They all live by faith. And it's to be taken for we can um, look at it. God gave us these scriptures so that we can apply them to our life. And we can do the same as we can live in faith having uh, an example, which is amazing. It's really amazing because he never leaves us. He always prepares things for us. He already knows ahead of time. But the word that you let it dwell on your heart, you let it grow. But to have faith, to have faith in him and knowing that only him, him and only him are, is going to be the one that can give you eternal life, save you, help you overcome tribulations, help you in any aspect whatsoever, just like Moses, Sarah, Abraham, Christ. Verse 18, it says, of whom it was called in Isaac, your seed shall be called concluding that God is able to raise him even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning these things. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the son of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. So look at his two as it's from Abraham, it's passed down to us, the descendants, and you're a descendant of Abraham. And, and, and to look at it, Christ and everything that trickles down from Christ to the disciples, to us now who belong to Christ, it's the the godly nature the spirit of god working through the prophets the disciples christ himself and that same holy spirit the same spirit of god working through you and it's to separate the characteristics of what you have uh the characteristics of god and then the characteristics of the world those who only go off of what is seen instead of those who live in faith live in righteousness going off of what is not seen Verse 23, it says, By faith Moses, when he had been born, was hidden three months by his parents because they had saw the beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. As it's faith. It's going against the grain. Anybody can go with the world and go with what the world says, but can you be a true man and woman of God, walk in love and do what the word of God says? It says, By faith, when, by faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the uh, passing pleasures of sin. This is amazing because it's the nature of God. It's the spirit of God. Those who belong to God, those who listen and live by faith, they don't want the pleasures of this world. They don't want to live in this world. They don't want to go off of what the carnal mind can see. They want to live in faith and live for the one who saves them, the one who does things for them, the one who never leaves them, never forsakes them, the one who helps them out of Egypt, the one who's always there for them, the one who helps them bear a child, the one who will actually do things for them and cares for them except for the world and living in sin and wickedness. In verse 26, it says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he looked to the reward he looked to the reward because it's eternal life it's what God can give us that which doesn't rust doesn't mold doesn't rot away deteriorate that which the world can never take from us that which the world can never offer us it's eternal life knowing the true living God but to know it's the greater riches than treasures in Egypt. And think about this, from all the golds, the rubies, the diamonds, everything that they had in ancient Egypt, royalty uh, to the fullest. I mean, look at everything that would carry to King Solomon, to King David. But to understand what it, from back then, um, in the times, how much faith that took from Moses to, to live according to the scriptures and according to the calling that he had received from God instead of living uh, in the pleasures of 
the world through Egypt and, and in sin, which is exactly why he was chosen from God and exactly why he is uh, God's. Verse 27, it says, By faith he overtook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He didn't care. He, he you know, whatever it was going to take, he didn't wasn't scared of the wrath. He only wanted to endure a seeing, seeing God himself, seeing Christ, and knowing that God's wrath, what God can do to him is nothing compared to um, what the king and, and what Pharaoh through Egypt could do to him is nothing compared to what God Almighty can do. Verse 28, it says, By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he should destroy the firstborn who should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as the dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting so were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. We should have when she had received the spies with peace. So as to look at it too, I mean, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe because they didn't believe. Instead, she had faith in which wasn't seen, which could not be seen, which is Christ, faith in God, and she was saved. And it's the same with have Moses having faith to go through the Red Sea and go to the dry land because he believed. But the Egyptians who did not believe tried to go that same path were drowned. So it's trying to understand you can't go the same path as the prophets, the disciples of Christ himself, because they were following God. So ultimately it's the path to God, the path that goes to God, which they all followed, which we who live by faith follow. But what you see is as the Egyptians and, and uh, Pharaoh, they tried to follow, but they didn't believe. So in order to walk the path to Christ, in order to go down that straight and narrow path, you have to go in faith. But when you live in faith, you go after the one who already walked the path, the one who lights it up for you. But when Pharaoh and the Egyptians tried to go that path and tried to go after the same route that Moses took, they were drowned. They were swallowed up, just like with the harlot Rahab. She didn't perish with those who didn't believe. They're, they're still on the same course. It's just the difference is those who don't believe get perished and swallowed up and those who believe live and live in faith and it doesn't mean that you're not going to get killed it doesn't mean that that you might not be killed it doesn't mean that you might not have to face death it just means that you live in faith and you live pleasing him you live right standing with him knowing that you have salvation and eternal life in him which is different than the world verse 32 it says what more shall i say for the time would fail to me gideon the barak gideon and barak and samson jephthah also david and samuel and the prophets who thought face of due kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promise, stopped mouths of lions. Stopped mouth of lions because it's, it's the faith. I mean, look at Daniel in the lion's den. He had faith in the Lord, knowing that the Lord was with him, and he was probably, the word doesn't say that, but he was probably cuddling up with the lions and uh, sleeping on them like a big pillow. It says, quench the violence of fire, escape from the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, became vigilant in battle, turned to flight the armies of a turned to flight the armies of aliens, which is just the out those who belong on the outskirts. They're aliens to the foreign land. Uh, they're aliens to the land, uh, Israel. Women received their dead race to life again, and others were tortured, not accept, accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. It's the difference. The women who received the dead raised to life again because they had faith. And others were tortured because they weren't delivered. They didn't have the deliverance. They didn't have the faith. So you see the difference. You see those who live in faith. And you see those who walk according to the world and just what can be seen. Verse 36, it says, Still others had trial of mocking and scourging, yes, and in chains of imprisonment. And that will happen in tapping today. But it's for righteousness sake. You have faith that those who are being persecuted, being mocked, being killed, being put behind bars are living in faith. Just like those who are living in faith today, walking with Christ. But it's the assurance to know that Christ went through it, the prophets went through it, the disciples went through it. So we also will too because this word is true. It's always been true. And it says you will be persecuted. But to know that you're in right standing with God in faith, knowing that he will deliver you no matter what. And that means even if you happen to die, he's going to deliver your soul to him to eternal life and you'll be with him forever for eternity. Verse 37, it says, They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were 
tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about with sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented because they don't belong to the world. The world hates God. The world hates uh, righteousness. It's because this world is run by the enemy. The entire world lays in the hands of the enemy. And that's because you're going the opposite path. You're exposing. The Word of God cuts sharper than any double-edged sword piercing the hearts of men. It's the conviction. They hate the conviction. They hate the light shine on their sin, which exposes the darkness. So it's easy for them just to walk in wickedness and persecute and mock and deny and even kill. Because it's the enemy. It's that that which you're either with Christ or against him. You can't serve two masters. You're either with the world or you're with Christ. So if you're with Christ, you will be persecuted. You will be hated, mocked, even beaten, put to death because it's the truth. But when you're with the world and with one of the world, they have the spirit of the one who runs the world, the Antichrist spirit. And it's all by, uh, at, we all see it by actions and fruit, the fruit that they bear. Verse 38, it says, Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in desert and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having attained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God, having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Because they can't. There's nothing perfect apart from the perfectness of, of Christ and God and in Him. And we will only be perfect when we die and we're standing uh, in him standing in his glory which is amazing so that was Hebrews chapter 11 you know we'll just run through it I love just getting into the word of God and once I get going it's it's amazing we just finish up the chapter so it's it's living in faith living according to what is not seen instead of what is seen having faith in the Lord and knowing that that faith faith in him pleases God has us right standing with God because we have faith in the blood of Christ and we're saved and it's amazing so Thank you guys for reading Hebrews chapter 11 with me. Tomorrow we'll jump right into Hebrews chapter 12. And then the next day we'll jump right into Hebrews chapter 13. So we only got a couple more chapters in the book of Hebrews. And then we'll see where, you know, God wants us to go after that. So thank you guys for reading with me. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. God bless you.